Before we get into this episode of Questions from Subs, I gotta give a special shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean patrons, Kevin and Kaim. I appreciate y'all. Now, normally, uh, when somebody becomes a patron, they'll send in a question from a subscriber. Uh, but they were like, no, we're just going to become patrons and just stay in the background and chill. I said, okay, that's cool, too. So, seriously, I, I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for what y'all are doing. And thanks to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Appreciate all of y'all. Uh, if you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingvids. If you don't want to, if you can't, don't feel bad. It's, it's, it is really okay. Um, the fact that y'all support uh, a lot and... and it, it just that that means everything because uh, as y'all can see stuff has picked up a lot stuff has gotten a lot crazy a lot busier there's been a lot of tour days as far as videos not not workouts but there's been a lot of tour days because stuff is just jumping it's going crazy right right like we're here the season's here so it's only gonna get crazy but i appreciate everybody for supporting now first question <laughs> <laughs> because ooh, over the weekend there has been a lot of just I don't know, dissension and arguing and back and forth amongst Ravens fans. Some Ravens fans are upset at other Ravens fans for Ravens fans having thoughts. So what's new? What's new? People are always looking for a reason to be mad. People are always looking for a reason to argue. And it's like, for what? Why? Just let people feel how they want to feel anyway. First question came from my guy Terry. And his, his subject was in awe. But what is he in all about? Well, y'all saw the thumbnail. Y'all see the title of the video. He said, what's up, Engraven? I know I sent a question from subs a couple days ago, but I'm sorry. I have to say it. We should have drafted George Pickens instead of David Ajabo. I wasn't mad at the pick with us selecting David Ajabo, but why not get a ready, uh, a, a ready injured player? Oh, excuse me. Why get a not ready injured player, David Ajabo, when you could get a major impact player of need in the second round with Pickens that allowed you to give him less guaranteed money, quality depth, and gives us an opportunity to sign another impact player from the jump at the edge position. Is it cool if I can get your thoughts on this? And if there's anything you will fix, what would it be if you don't mind telling? Thanks. Hope for the best. Keep going at it and trust. <laughs> Appreciate it, Terry. What a way to start us off. Um, George Pickens. There's a lot of Ravens fans that do wish we would have drafted George Pickens. And if y'all don't want to speak up, I, I will. I did. I sure did. Hey, you can go look at videos and I kept saying the same thing. He's a wide receiver. Um, and then I, when, we, when, they tra when they traded Hollywood away, I, I was like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They definitely drafting receiver for sure. Without a doubt, it's definitely happened because they, they just traded away their top target. He's gone. And we know Rashad Bateman is probably going to get into that role now, but I was like, they traded their top target away. They ain't going to roll with the guys that they got. Nah, no way. No way. They, yeah, they traded for somebody. I mean, they drafted somebody. Nope. Oh, they traded for somebody. Nope. But George Pickens was sitting there. He posted up. And yeah, he, he had the little injury that, that, that dropped him out of the first round. But a ball is a baller. And Ravens like, oh, no, we good. I mean, they drafted David Ajabo, and we know David Ajabo would have been a, a, a really high pick. Maybe top 12, top 15 pick uh, had he not gotten the Achilles injury, but he did get the Achilles injury. Um, and this year, uh, I would say anything you get out of him is a bonus. I wouldn't really count on him till next year. I know Harbaugh did say that he expects him by mid or well, David Ajabo actually said that he expects to be back by midseason. I said, okay, hey, don't rush him, Raven. But it's like you... Any draft pick is a question mark. Any single one is a question mark because you just don't know how they're going to do. But if you get an injured draft pick, then it becomes an even bigger question mark because one, you don't know what they're going to do, but two, you don't even know when they're going to do it. Now, David Ajabo, I hope he balls out um, when he does hit the field eventually, whenever that will be. But who knows when he's going to hit the field? George Pickens, like you mentioned, it was a position of need. Um, especially with them getting rid of Hollywood. Um, it was a position that would he could have had an immediate impact. And I, I, I loved everything about him. And I, I told you, there, there were uh, character concerns. That's, I, I know that's something that a lot of Ravens fans bring up who, who, who don't like other Ravens fans talking about George Pickens. They say, oh, character concerns, EDC would never. He would never. But guess what? Didn't he sign Des Bryant? 
Didn't he sign Des Bryant? Didn't Des Bryant have these character concerns? I think he did. Oh, character concerns. Who's the guy that I kept comparing George Pickens to on defense? I said George Pickens was the offensive version of this person. Marcus Peters had character concerns. EDC not only, he went and traded for Marcus Peters. Traded for him. So, I don't want to hear about that character concern stuff. Because that's false. It's false. George Pickens would have been just fine. He would have been just fine. The character concerns that people were talking about was him getting into some fights on the field. Him, I think... Goodness. That is so Marcus Peters too. Him like spraying a water bottle in somebody's face. That, that, that ain't nothing but Marcus Peters, man. But and and so many Ravens fans, oh man, we miss Marcus Peters. Of course, for his play, but we just miss his swagger. We miss his presence. We miss his energy. You wouldn't want that same energy on offense, too. If you if you're saying you missed it, but then you're saying, oh, well, the Ravens, they, they shouldn't have drafted George Pickens because he got character concerns. Then you cannot say that you miss Marcus Peters. Well, that sounds like a bit of a double standard to me, buddy. But anyway, it is what it is. Um, George Pickens would have been great. Um, and the Steelers, they, they obviously have a history of doing a phenomenal job of drafting and developing wide receivers. Hopefully the Ravens can turn a page on that, and we'll see what they do with the guys that they got now. Um, but George Pickens, he, he, he's been doing nice. And the thing with him, um, he's been as advertised. The same thing that he was known for. Excuse me. Uh, I didn't even eat breakfast yet. But the same thing that he was known for in college is transferring to the pros right now. He's known for making plays, but known for running his mouth too. But he backs it up. And, of course, the, the talk of it, all the training camp. Oh, George Pickens this, George Pickens that. What a crazy catch by George Pickens. Oh, man, he got another touchdown in training camp. He balling in training camp. You kept hearing this stuff. But then it's like, all right, he, he doing it in training camp. That's cool. Let's see what he does when, when it's a game. <laughs> he did the same thing in the game. Same thing in the game. Even did the little Antonio, da uh, Antonio Brown dance too. I said, oh, oh okay, George Pickens. All right, now. Cause you, hey, you know Steelers fans, they know who Antonio Brown is. But I'm like, man, wow. That dude, is he's doing it. But then there were these Ravens fans that are like, hey, Ravens fans, you guys aren't allowed to celebrate George Pickens being successful. You guys aren't allowed to acknowledge him being successful. Oh, you want to cheer for George Pickens? You want to talk about how good he is? Go be a Steeler fan, buddy. And it's like, it, it's not that serious. It's not. It's not. George Pickens is balling right now. And Ravens going to have to deal with that two times a year. Two times a year, at least. Could possibly be three if both teams make the playoffs and they match up with each other. But they're going to have to deal with that two times a year. So Ravens, they better come with it. And George, again, George Pickens is being everything is advertised. And it's great. Now, another thing that a lot of Ravens fans have done. They try to be like, oh, since you, 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 you're, you're celebrating George Pickens doing good, you're talking about how good George Pickens is and that you wish we would have drafted him, that means that you don't like our own guys. No, that doesn't mean that at all. It doesn't mean that. <laughs> like, that's what we talk about, man. Like, <laughs> it, there's a lot of Ravens fans that just, they, they, they look for things to be angry about and it's not worth it. They look for reasons to be like, hey, I'm the best Ravens fan that there is, there was, and there ever will be. Shout out to Bret Hart, by the way. And it's like, you, you don't have to put your fandom against other Ravens fans to try to show, hey, this is the real way to be a fan. And you're not being a real fan. Please, no, don't do that. It's, it's not necessary. It's really not. Seriously, it's not. Stop policing how people fan stop please it's not worth it's not worth the energy I, I i promise you there's so many other things that you could be doing with that energy it's not worth it it's not worth it just because a lot of ravens fans are acknowledging how well george pickens is doing doesn't mean that oh man they saying oh david ajabo sucks oh man isaiah likely sucks oh man our draft pick suck no nobody's saying that well, there probably is somebody out there saying it, but most people not saying that. They're just like, all right, hey, we wish that we could have got George Pickens, but they, they still going to hope that the Ravens guys do well, too. That, and that's it. That's it. 
I wish we got would have got George Pickens, but they didn't. Okay, cool. They didn't get him. All right, they ain't get him. He would have been nice with the Ravens, okay, but they ain't get him. He would have brought that swagger to the Ravens on open, but hey, they ain't, <laughs> they ain't get him. They ain't get him. Okay, so let's hope the guys that the Ravens do get and did get, they can ball out. But I do understand people's argument when uh, specifically the Pickens and Ajabo because best ability is availability. And again, we know we feel bad for uh, David Ajabo for what happened to him. It sucks. It really sucks because it messed up everything for him, changed everything for him. Um, but the bottom line is when, when you're being straight up about it, Pickens is on the field, David Ajabo is not. And like we said earlier, every single draft pick is a question mark. But the answers to George Pickens' questions are getting answered a lot faster than the David Ajabo's questions. And that's it. That's it. Ain't no need to fight about it. Ain't need, no need to go back and forth. It is what it is. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. All right, first question came from my guy Terry. Next question came from my guy Terrence. So I guess this is like the Terry episode anyway. He said, you may want to read it all before responding. Uh-oh. Okay, here we go. Because you know how we could talk and get on. Anyway, he said, Angraven, I know you have said that that you hold everyone accountable on the team. But I don't think that's the case. Uh-oh. Oh, oh there's another person. Who, uh, there's something to say about me, and that's okay. He said, when have you ever criticized Lamar Jackson as much as you have our receiving core, our offensive coordinator, or Tyler Huntley. You must not have been around last year. You, I, I, you must not have been around last year. I, I think um, this is, uh, even early this offseason, we did a video specifically about accountability. People, different p people on the Ravens from top to bottom being accountable specific on everybody we talked about steve bishotti we talked about edc we talked about john harbaugh we talked about greg roman we talked about i think wink was still the defensive coordinator at that time so that's how early in the offseason it was we talked about lamar jackson specifically we had sections for every single person every single person and who, who else did we talk about i think we talked about somebody else too but we talked about it um, as far as, uh, and, and I think, when, oh, and you brought up, uh, Greg Roman. Well, yeah, we, we be getting on Greg Roman because of his history. And the reason that we get on Greg Roman because of his history is because history has not shown success for the wide receivers. And see, it, it's like a trickle down effect. Cause you said, oh, you don't get on anybody as you don't get on Lamar like you get on the receiving core or OC. Those two are tied in together for sure. Because. Greg Roman's offenses have shown, hey, the quarterback going to take off, the quarterback going to run, and the, the running game, the, the running game going to run, <laughs> but the receivers, ooh, they, they ain't going to run like that. They ain't going to get much burn. They ain't going to get much. Uh, there, there's not going to be an emphasis put on those guys. But then um, with Tyler Huntley, uh, I think with the Tyler Huntley, I think you may have a little recency bias. reason I say that is because who was the quarterback – that finished out the season for the Ravens last year. Who was the quarterback that played in the preseason this year? It's Tyler Huntley. Tyler Huntley. Tyler Huntley has been the quarterback that we've seen the most recently. So maybe that's why you feel like I criticized Tyler Huntley extra. I've been criticizing him more. I feel like we don't really get on Tyler Huntley like that. Even like in the preseason game, when we talked about the deep ball. Uh, it was like, hey, it, it, he threw one deep ball, and it was just off the tip of Benjamin Victor's hands. It was just a little bit too far, but I was like, okay. It, I, I also said it's preseason. It's, I, I said, I ain't, I ain't, gonna, ain't nobody going to trip out over, like, over one pass. It's preseason. But anyway, let's keep going. He said, obviously, Lamar is great, but you never have any dissertations criticizing him, throwing the ball into the ground, not getting the ball out quick enough, missing targets because of inaccuracy, but you do crit criticize receivers for drops, even when the majority of their targets are catchers like Lamar with passing. Oh, I think I see what you're saying, but that that's wrong as well. As well, we 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 talked about. Oh man, we I think 
I wonder if you were only here uh, later in the off season, like more recently in the off season. I think that might be why you feel like that, because early in the off season, uh, especially like right when the season had finished, we 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 talked about that a lot. We talked about um, Lamar making quicker decisions. We talked about him needing to do more check down plays. We talked about him hitting guys in stride. We talked something that we talked about, and I'm so glad that it's happening too. Something that we talked about that will make Lamar so much better. Will take his game to another level. I said timing routes. And back shoulder throw. Ooh, and now them back shoulder throws is coming into play, baby. But now, where, where I do understand, what, I, I can understand you if you came here like in the, the heat of this offseason because most of the Lamar Jackson talk that we've been doing on here, because the biggest thing that has been surrounding Lamar Jackson on here uh, is a lot of analysts and media guys continuing to doubt him and continuing to say he can't do this and he can't do that. And there's been a lot of contract talking. What should he get? Does he deserve it? da 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 so we've been talking about that a lot on here. So I could understand how you would feel this way. And it's fine. It's fine. But anyway, he said, Tyler Huntley gets the ball out quickly with minimal inaccuracy for short and medium passes, but suffers on the deep ball. But you knock him for his ability anytime he's brought up. I don't knock him. I, 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 don't, I don't knock Tyler Huntley. I, 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 again, but again, what, well, let's keep going. The Ravens didn't stop doing Ravens things when he came in. They were still in nail biters, only this time they didn't have the one miracle play to save the day like Lamar was lucky enough to have while he was playing. Oh, you're talking about Tyler Huntley. Okay, like, okay, so, so, so now it's, um, th see that part, that, when, when people do that, the whole Tyler Huntley, Lamar thing, they say, oh, Tyler Huntley, he did his thing, and he did do his thing, but he lost. He lost. Lamar Jack, the, the difference, like you just said yourself, I ain't write this, you wrote it, like you just said yourself, the Ravens didn't stop doing Ravens things when Tyler Huntley came in, they were still in nail biters, only this time, they did not, you said it, you wrote it, not me, they did not have the one miracle play to save the day like Lamar, you said it, not me, so you, 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 just, you put Lamar over Tyler Huntley, you, now you said it, not you wrote it, you wrote it. Your email, not mine. So you've acknowledged that, hey, Lamar is better than Tyler Huntley. Lamar won more than Tyler Huntley. Lamar made more plays than Tyler Huntley. You wrote it. Ain't you write this? And, and that, that part right there, that part for me was about a lot of people, they... <laughs> And I was like, when they were saying, I was like, what? What are you talking about? When people were like, oh, hey, hey, Ravens should trade away Lamar Jackson and, and, and keep Tyler Huntley. It's like, what? Yeah. Anyway, let's keep going. He said, when Lamar is struggling, it's everyone else's fault, which is why now you are really pushing no excuses. What? What? <laughs> oh, no, you must not know me, my friend. Okay, again, if you if you knew here, again, I, it's okay. It ain't no worries. But like, no, if Lamar has a bad game. We will say Lamar had a bad game. When Lamar make a terrible decision. We will say Lamar made a terrible decision. It ain't nothing like, like oh, man, th th this, season, this season really need to come back around. Because it, it sounds like you tripping out. This, this season need to hurry up and come back. We need to see Lamar on the field. And hopefully Lamar won't have no bad decisions. Well, he will. It happens. Every quarterback has some bad decisions that he does. Like, he, I remember the, the, the Chiefs game. The Chiefs game. And the, the Chiefs, I mean, the Ravens won that game. And I was like, oh, yeah, let's go. I mean, we could talk about the Browns game, that little four interception game. Ooh, that was, uh, yug, uh, that was yugly. Yugly. Because it was yikes and ugly put together. It was yugly. But anyway, um, that Chiefs game, I remember uh, the, the interception that he threw, the second interception that he threw, um, where he was throwing a Hollywood. Hollywood had like three dudes on him. I'm like, Lamar, what was that? Because a lot of times when I'm watching the game live, watching Lamar play live, and he'll throw an interception or something, he'll throw a bad play. Or it'll be a bad play. And I'll be thinking, oh, let me see the replay. So let me try to see what he saw. So they'll show up from a different angle. And I'm like, what? What was that? Who, who, what was he thinking? So, yeah, we, we get on Lamar, too. It, it, anyway, he said, excuse me. Oh, about what you were saying. You are really pushing no excuses. No, I've wanted there to be no excuses. Because I, I've wanted the Ravens to really provide Lamar with the best of the best, like a lot of other quarterbacks are getting. And I feel like they haven't done that. And I've said that a million times. Y'all already know. 
Um, but that's it. Anyway, we'll keep going. He said Tyler Huntley was able to get a first possession touchdown, something Lamar struggled with for the entire season. We talked about that a lot. We talked about that all season. How the offense would just come out so slow. We talked about that all off se- all, all season. I mean, not all off season, all season. But anyway, he said he also didn't turn over the ball to put us in holes that we had to come back from. His defense was worse than Lamar's. He did have trouble scoring touchdowns, but where are the G-Row and receiver criticisms when discussing that? When we criticize Greg Roman, when we criticize even receivers, we, we talked about that. We talked about with the offense, period. I said, from the 20 to the 20, <laughs> thumbs up. But once they get inside that 20, it's like, ooh, here we go. That was with Lamar. That was with Tyler Huntley. When we talked about the drops too, like Hollywood, I remember um in the uh oh, the Steelers game, last game of the season. Tyler Huntley moving the ball, Ravens running the ball, da 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 to get to the red zone. It's like, all right. Tyler Huntley, woo, put it on Hollywood in the chest, baby. And Hollywood said, boop, boop, boop. I'm like, oh, come on. Who's that on? That's on Hollywood. They don't know, they don't know Hunt. They know Greg Roman. That was it wasn't a bad play call that then. That was on Hollywood ain't got nothing to do with anybody else. Tyler Huntley gave you opportunity. He dropped it. So we, we, we get on everybody. Trust me. We talk about everybody respectfully, of course, not like disrespecting nobody, nothing like that. But everybody is nobody's above criticism. We always say that nobody is above criticism at all because nobody's perfect. Nobody is. Anyway, he said um, I love Lamar and I hate when the media constantly says he can't throw as if he hadn't had the most accurate 400 yard, uh, four touchdown passes game in NFL history or led the league in touchdown passes. But I would love to see more honest and objective criticism of Lamar rather than calling everyone around him subpar. Just a though. Oh, I think you meant just a thought. Just a thought. Keep doing what you're doing. I appreciate you for making being a Ravens fan just that much more fun. Oh, yeah. Again, yeah. Everybody, everybody gets it. Everybody gets it. But then at the same time, with what you were saying about everyone around Lamar being subpar, um, think about not, and, and it's not that everybody around him is subpar. That, that, that's not the case. Um, but how does the team do when, when Lamar Jackson is playing versus how does, that, how does the team do when he's not playing? Think about that. And then we'll get back to it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Shout out to Graven.